I got the email to say that I was sitting down with Adam, Gareth, and Mike to have a round table about the MonsterVerse. I mean, the first thought that went through my head is, well, why don't we just do that every weekend for dinner? Oh, he's so big, right? Yes. Hi, you were yeah. so little last time I saw you. He's grown a bit. When I first heard that this round table was happening, I was just glad that I have uh, people a little bit smarter than me and more articulate to be able to uh, talk about our experiences during these movies. It's a strange thing when you get to make a movie. It's like an amazing thing, but it's also quite a difficult process. It's a bit like going into war, and so like these are my fellow soldiers and marines that know what it was like. With everyone else, it's like, you don't know, man, you weren't there. I think we always have a really good time when we're together. There's a very strange, rare, common bond between four guys who directed giant monster movies. What is really special is a camaraderie of not just filmmakers who have worked on the same project. We're unified through this, but I think four friends. What is cool about the MonsterVerse, and each movie sort of is a different thing. Did well, you feel like, sorry, did you feel like restricted because I guess we had the luxury of being the first one out. Mm -hmm. So there was no like stylistic <laughs> reference, like you've got to be like that. But I never thought about it, but was, was it restrictive having to no. follow? No, like, not it was intimidating, if anything. Um, it was what I, what I love about this series of films is that you know, it starts very grounded and real, like the original Godzilla, right? right? Uh, the 54 Godzilla. But the fun thing is that I feel like all four films almost take the decades of Toho films and compress them down to four. Because the Toho films started very <laughs> grounded and gritty and real and then just got psychedelic and weird mm -hmm. by the time you get into like the 70s and beyond. And so to trace the evolution from your film into Jordan's into mine to yours, which flat out gets bizarre in all the right ways. You know, we're, to point, we're, we're, we're descending into the hollow earth well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember thinking how interesting that was that the series, because I don't think it was ever a conscious choice between any of us where we said, you know, it should evolve in that direction. And it just kind of naturally yeah. happened that way. And, you know, like, like you guys really set up the characters. And then I felt like you kind of solidified sort of the reality that kind of like the monarch, the, the huge bases and stuff. Because, oh, I was going for fantasy. Well, exactly. Because yeah. once you did that, I was like, well, you can't step back and go back into Gareth's movie, you know what I'm saying, with like normal tanks and stuff. Once you, you bring know? in the three-headed dragon or, or, you and know, the giant moth, you, there's no putting the genie yeah. back. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a fun question. How, how's it been with the fandom for everybody? I, I love the, the Monsterverse fans and I love Kaiju fans in general. For me, it's a slightly interesting experience because I do think that there is this slight dichotomy between people who love the films that are self-described lovers of Kaiju films and like Godzilla Toho films. Hmm. And then people who just sort of like either a King Kong or Spectacle or just the idea of like giant monsters fighting or like adventure films. Because right. my, my movie has like, you know, a, uh, a Harryhausen adventure, Mystery Island, you know, slash uh, platoon, whatever you want to call it. It's got a, it has a different sort of vibe. It's playing a different game than just these two things fighting. Like, okay, so you had a classic that you were going against, right? Like King Oh Kong. yeah, one of the best films of all time. Yeah. And <laughs> Without the, question. The, it's 19, tough act to the 1954 <laughs> Godzilla is also a classic I consider it, you know, in terms of Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> King like, Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, it's a it's a low bar, right? Does that <laughs> Well, listen, I would never say that, and I think a lot of people would be upset to yeah, hear you say that, Gareth. <laughs> so uh, we got to backtrack from there. Uh, well, no, but it's it's not as 
you know, immediately iconic, let's say, is, you know, the, the original Godzilla and King Kong. But just the, the, the idea of King Kong versus Godzilla is, is almost bigger than the movie itself. In all the chatter of the internet of like, okay, <laughs> Godzilla won, ah da da, and this isn't just me being biased for my boy, but I mean, sure, Godzilla, you know, he's got the upper hand, mm -hmm. he knocks him out. <laughs> Bottom line is, Godzilla would be toast if Kong didn't then come and dismantle. But that's a different fight. Listen, don't, don't feed into it's that. It's all part of the same fight, fight man. You yes. are going fight. to. It's, you can't, you do you can't, know how much I have to like deal with online, Jordan? You can't. You can't, you can't say be like, this. oh, in the middle of this like war, we were fighting. Listen, in the they trenches. had a fight. We, we took out. Had a we fight. took out this like tank that's a different brigade. Fight. <laughs> this tank brigade got taken out. But then at the end of it, these paratroopers came in, and if someone, it's like no, like it's all the same thing. Michael, so, <clears throat> let them fight. <laughs> In an age of cinematic universes, how do we feel about the one that we participated in? I think that like Godzilla Kong proved that like this kind of niche kaiju strange thing that like a lot of people I'd love for, like, you know, now that there's sort of the four of them and people sort of see what this was, I do think that's bringing even more attention to it. So. You know, I, th I would, would just hope that it continues and they continue finding, um, if not <laughs> one of the directors here, that they keep finding other directors to kind of keep bringing their spin and their, their voice to one, it. To one day we're all gonna be, this is how we know we're sort of friends for life because one day no matter what happens, we're all gonna be on stage like 30 <laughs> years from now. <laughs> like on our deathbeds. Our holograms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's going to be like a whole, and now, you know, uh, Godzilla versus the Smug Monster director, you know, like, and there'll be like, with our walkers. People. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It felt like a unique club, but I feel like, I feel like it's not going to, I mean, why would it end, right? Yeah, I mean, like the, I, I think the, the the through line of it is that these are they're not just monsters; they're they're characters, and we want to see where their journey is going. And 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 also as as special effects evolve, it it just allows you to lean more and more into that. And um, and 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 I think like, you know, like the, you know, as far as I can tell, where the series is going is that you know I think that there's going to be just more and more runtime with the monsters themselves being able to just be monsters and do monster stuff, you know, which is what, you know, for me, I, when I think about these films, like when I was a kid, you know, you want to see the monsters do things and you have your own ideas about what's going on in their head. And that's what's cool about them. The monsters can't talk literally, but they still have kind of defined personalities in their own way. But there's also still a level of interpretation that the audience has with uh, the monsters themselves. And, and I think that's really exciting to see kind of roll out and, and, and to be able to play with. These things are characters and like, they all kind of have these like very tragic, bizarre backstories, mm -hmm. you know? And, and there's something to be said for that. And the more that that can kind of get milked, you know, in a way that isn't just like, well, oh, these are two giant things punching each other. But there, there's like pathos and tragedy and beauty and weight to, to all of them in their own yeah. way. Well, all monsters are mythic figures. Right. And we're right. always gonna have a need for those kinds of myths. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to Monster Talk today. Yeah, that was a good wrap up actually. <laughs>